Just because the pastor's away doesn't mean you get to play, okay? Um, so you're, you're, not, uh, you're not in bad company. We've got several weeks of, of people within our, our church that, that are going to be speaking. It's going to be a great word, a great time, a special season. Uh, last year I was our first time ever really jumping into this, right, Jeff? It was last year we had the conversation. And we had a conversation where we thought, well, we've got missions team that's going across the globe. Why can't we do missions here too? And so imagine the impact. We're having an impact across the globe, but now we have a chance to have an impact here. Two's better than one. So uh, this morning, Jeff's going to bring a a short word, and and we're going to have a little fun this morning. So... Uh, we, we actually have a poll for you that we want you to do. Uh, and for some of you that maybe aren't quite technologically advanced yet, this might be a little bit of a struggle, so look on to your neighbor. Uh, so here in just a few minutes, I encourage you, we, we, we actually left room in the worship guides, just lines to take notes, but I encourage you to open the app, the Agape Church app, and there's a, a heading in there that says Message Notes. And so that's, we, we have just a few notes. We've got some resources in there. There'll be a link to the poll I'll tell you to go to in a few minutes, or there'll be a, a code come up on the screen for you to scan if you want to do that with your camera phone for you that are highly advanced with your smartphones. Uh, so we'll have those options. We'll jump into that, and I'll, I'll take over from that point. So, Jeff? Yeah, so, uh, so super excited, first of all. The team overseas, man, Keep them in prayer the next right. uh, several days as they're they're working in a place that they've never been. And when Pastor James uh, um, asked us to to speak this morning, like me and Blake, we had the same reaction. We we're like super excited. One, Blake was super excited that he got to hang out with me, if you know Blake. And two, my net message notes, I can get all in like this. If you're talking with Blake. He can do all the talking, if you guys know, right? <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I just, uh, I, I uh, thank you to Pastor James and Nisi for trusting us to come out here, but uh, just to be able to to talk and to Blake. Um, I don't always talk um, great about Blake, um, <laughs> but Tiffany, I am a nice guy to your husband. I, I mess around, but hey, Blake does so much for this church, and I just say, Thank you for what you do here that a lot of people don't notice. A lot of people really don't notice and don't see, but he is um, the engine behind most of this stuff going on. No matter how bad we talk about him, he really does a great job. Hey, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead. Um, So yesterday we had a a great opportunity. We had, um, I don't know, half dozen, dozen people meet at the Triangle community. Super fun, super great. I had some conversations with uh, some residents there. So Triangle Community is what, uh, two miles, two miles away, super easy drive, um, real big open space and 200 apartments there, right? So was able to like, just all we did uh, yesterday was just hang out, uh, hang out, hand out flyers and really just, uh, we got to talk to a couple people. Um, but the, the, the point is that we're, we're, we're getting in there and that's our vision, that's our goal this year, um, that's our, we'll call our Agape Project, that we're going to spread the gospel, preach the word, and uh, just show love to that certain community. Pick that community, and we're just going to, uh, just all in to go and show the love. So we got the um, break the ice yesterday, we handed out flyers, had a couple conversations. Uh, next time we go, they're going to feel more comfortable. Then the next time we go, we're not going to do one event um, next week and just go, oh, that was, we're done with them, right? We're going to, um, it's all about, if you guys know, it's all about building relationships, building trust, people to trust you that when you do come by, that you can pray with them, that you can talk to them, that we're, we're just normal, that we just want to hang out. We're going to eat really good food um, next week, and uh, we're going to have a good time. So, but, but so, so we didn't really just go out and knock on doors and and uh, tell them about Jesus. We handed out flyers if they were out there, but we did have a really good opportunity. Desmond actually uh, was talking to somebody. 
and um, she just lost her husband recently, and then her grandson, I believe, I wasn't in that group, uh, very recently. So what is that? We're going and we're spreading the love of Jesus. Our job is just to go spread the love. So he had an opportunity, and his team got it, had an opportunity to actually pray with her. Hey, we don't know what people are going through. We don't know the situations that people go through, right? So, so I say that to say the next time we go, it'll be easier. Like, they'll, they'll start trying. If they see the same faces, if they see your face next time, they see your face, and, and, and just to have that conversation, we don't know what people go through. So, so the, um, the whole message about all of this, of the eyewitnesses, how do, how do I share my faith? Who do you share your faith with? Where do we share our faith? Got a really awesome meeting this last week uh, with the warden of the jail, uh, Warden Summerall, uh, Warden Mike Summerall, sat in his office, and we got approval, per permission. Um, I actually told, I texted Josh Pugh the, the day he was flying out, he might have been at a different airport, but uh, that we're going to get in the juvenile detention center. How cool is that to get the, into the youth to speak Jesus, to speak life, to speak the good news to, into the juvenile? So we're really excited about that, right? But, but it's, it's so easy to talk Jesus when we're in these chairs, right? It's so easy. I mean, I, I'm bold as a lion. <laughs> I'm bold as a lion when we can talk about Jesus right here with the people that we know that have the same relationship or, or a relationship with Jesus, right? We can get up here and we can worship. It don't matter who's watching us. We can get up here and we can raise our hands. We can, we can pray. And, and it doesn't matter. But that's how we're supposed to be at all times, right? That's how sharing our faith is supposed to be bold as lions everywhere we go, right? I, I mean... It, it, it's simple. I'll come up here. I'll close my eyes. I don't care who's around me. But do I act like that in the street? Do I act like that um, at my workplace? Do I act like that when something happens and the customer service gets on my nerves? Come on. Come on. I mean, Pastor James ain't here, but he, what would he say? This is real Sunday. Let's talk real, right? Let's talk. So, so where, where, where do we share our faith? And, and, and when is the last time... You mentioned God, or you heard God, in, and we'll just call it our workplace. When's the last time? And not followed by the word damn. Sorry, well, but let's be real. All right, so when's the last time we heard that word in our workplace? We hear it here. We do it here. We do it around our other Christians. If we're at our, our Christian friend's house, we might talk about Jesus. We're around them. Uh, whatever we do in life, you know, we might. But what about when you're not around other Christians? How do we show our faith? How do we do? Um, Pastor Jeff a couple weeks ago was incredible. The man was awesome. I loved him. It was the first time I heard him. It was incredible. And I, something stuck to me. He said, he said, gospel means good news. News equals words. Words need to be spoken. Church. We have to speak the good news. We have to speak the word. We have to get out. This right here, I always compare it to, right now, it's Sunday morning. This is just a gas pump. We come up. We get filled up. We, we have corporate worship. We have corporate prayer. We, we, we get together, which is amazing, but it's just like a gas pump. It's like when you go to your, uh, the gas station, you fill up your car, and then what do you do with your car? You drive, and you go out. And you use that gas. That's what we should look at church. Like we come into the church house and it's like, let's, let's get our fill up in. If this is where we have to do this, because we're worshiping with other, we got a really great band and the worship music's good and it's, it's, it's amazing, right? Pastor James is the best. But when we get into the street, we should be full and that's when we empty our gas, right? We should be able to empty to others. Um... I just don't understand when we speak the word and we speak, I, I don't understand how we could use the church as a check mark. So many people use it like, oh, I went to church Sunday, check, I'm good for a week, right? And I don't understand that because I don't see where our lives will be without the Holy Spirit on a daily, like on a daily, because I've seen 
where my life was before the Holy Spirit. And it was broken. And it was full of baggage. And it was full of nonsense. And it was stupid. And everything that you can describe. But when you just dive in, you don't have to be this, uh, this crazy religious person. But you got to have crazy faith on it. You got to be able to, the Holy Spirit is our helper, right? He's our helper. He provides for us. He's everything in us. It's all about the Holy Spirit, right? So, so I was studying and, and, and going about this, and I'm like, how do, we, how do we share our faith? There's several different examples. People will uh, have different ways. Some ways are um, maybe not the way I would do it, but... Uh, uh, but so there was one general, William Booth, who's the founder of the Salvation Army back in the late 1800s. He said uh, he would like to dangle his trainees, his evangelism trainees, over hell for 24 hours. That way he can see the reality, that way they can see the reality that is coming to those that don't know Jesus. I mean... If, if, if you picture that, hey, if I just, if I just hang my trainees, they're, they're, then they're going to get serious about speaking the word. We don't have to do that because what? God is love, right? God is love. Apostle Paul, man, if you, if you talk about sharing your faith, you can't talk about it without talking about Apostle Paul. Peter too, but Apostle Paul, he, his mission was to share his faith, share Jesus with the Jewish people. And in that time, it was turned down. It was, and, but it was so extreme. He didn't care, right? Apostle Paul, um, when, when, when Apostle Paul would go out, we would, uh, he, would, he would share it and he would teach it different than William Booth. He would share it with the love and share it with the grace and everything that, that Jesus brings to the table, right? We don't, we don't, we don't try to scare the person in the community. We don't go to Triangle Community and, and have a fire with us. I'm like, you're going to burn in this if you do not give your life to Jesus. We tell them, we say, Jesus is love. Everything that we do is about Jesus. The way I do myself at work, it's about Jesus. The way I walk into Lowe's and the Walmart, it's about Jesus. The way I, that, that I have a phone conversation with somebody, it's about Jesus. I don't have to speak his name, and I'm not going to heaven because I'm a, I don't get in trouble and I'm not in the jail docket, right? It's the same thing, that, that everything that we do is Christ-like. As a Christian, we're supposed to be Christ-like. I don't walk in and stand on the table and say, you better be saved or you're going to burn in hell. No, but, but then our actions that we can, when somebody's hurting, that we can have that conversation, and we can be that person to speak Jesus. So, as Paul said, and uh, um, Paul preached, he, he preached the love of Christ. So, in Romans um, two, three, I was on. It says, it says, my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. I will be willing to be forever cursed. Cut off from Christ if that would save them. It's amazing. Apostle Paul said, Lord, do whatever you got to do to me as long as my people are saved. That they grasp it, that they see it, that they quit denying it, maybe from their culture, but they, 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 they welcome in the Holy Spirit. Um, and Paul 28 and Paul. In uh, Acts 28, 20, Paul, he's bound. He's bound in chains because um, it says, I am bound in chains because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, quote unquote Jesus, has already come. He's in chains. He's in prison. The whole uh, two-thirds of the New Testament, Paul Paul wrote, and it's in and in and out of the different cities, in and out of the different places that, that he's in chains for preaching the gospel. Now, when we talk about that, just, just to 
talk about Paul. We all, well, if you don't know, but the, the conversion from, to Paul from Saul. Saul was a person that um, ordered people, Christians, to die. He, uh, he, gave the, uh, he agreed to stone Stephen to death. For preaching the gospel like he you, you see like so he, he was an evil evil man as Saul and before his and and then his conversion before his conversion as Saul he hated the Christians he hated them right because it was not that that's not what they were supposed to do get converted and that's a whole nother lesson but but after after the conversion he preaches the gospel and goes to prison. So let's think about that. I just want you to think about that one time. We're going to get into the next section in just a second. But so a man, so, so, so we always complain now like, oh, this world's so twisted. It's crazy. I can't believe I don't want to raise my children in 2020s because they're, they're, it's, it's this and this and they're taking prayer out of school and they're doing this and that. It's been going on for forever. Saul so orders people to die, stones people, gets people stoned, kills Christians, gets, gets ki Christians killed, and nothing happens. He preaches the gospel. He talks about Jesus. He spreads the love, and he does it out of love. Paul wasn't the one, and he goes to prison. You guys see that? We complain so much about like, well, they take prayer out of school, they put it in, they take, I, I don't even know where it's at right now, right? And, and, and the thing is though, like, but, but this happened to the Apostle Paul. So you, we can't be surprised, we can't live on both sides of the fence. We can't say, well, I just wanna be good with everybody. And no, Paul said it doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach if I'm in chains or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still preach. I'm going to preach even if everybody's uncomfortable. I'm going to preach to the ones that don't know. He, and he's preaching to his people, to the Jewish people. That was his goal. That was his vision. So I just want you to, I want you to just, just put in your minds that, that, when, we, that when we do this, is, is it going to be uncomfortable? Sure. Does that matter? The guy that killed, the guy that stoned, the guy that did all this in the world's eyes, he's fine. No, he's not getting in trouble. Don't put him in a prison. But if you speak Jesus, we're locking you up. So the question there is, I mean, if you see our face in the jail docket, hopefully it's for like Paul, right? right. Hopefully it's for speaking Jesus. That's the, that's the only way, right? So, so speak Jesus. Be uncomfortable. Do what the word says. We're going to move into the next session, and uh, Blake's got questions for us. All right. Yeah. It's uh, sharing your faith and, and communicating Jesus and, and talking about God is a very, it can be, it can be tough. It can be tough. And when me and Jeff were getting together, and by the way, uh, you know, he said some nice things about me, so I'm gonna say some nice things about him. Uh, I love I love his heart for people. Uh, last year was the first year we ever did anything like street fest. Uh, just just out of curiosity, who who was here last year that went to street fest? There's several hands, bunch of hands. Okay, um, we got to pray with a lot of people. We got to talk to a lot of people, and and it was a, a great experience. And so, a big part of that come from Jeff, and uh, his heart for people, and for for both Kim and Jeff, is is just uh, it's inspiring for me. Uh, just because I'm, all right. If you've ever been through Discover, I'm task oriented. Okay, there's task and then there's people oriented. I. Uh, I fall 100% to the task-oriented person. Like, if it needs to get done, you're in my way, I'll have to push you out of the way to get it done, okay? If, if we're just gonna be real. Uh, but these, these two genuinely do love people. And 
so I, I do. I, there's no better people that I would love to be uh, on this mission with. But in saying that, uh, we put together, when me and Jeff were talking about this Sunday, we put together a list of some of the things that holds us back. Because cause here's the thing. I got to stand up for a second. I normally don't share my stage with people. <laughs> so... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sorry, Pastor James, if you're watching this online. Uh, by the way, people, it's online, you can participate with this too. But we come up with a list of things that holds us back. Because, right, if, if we want to do something, we're, we're a people in the U.S. of A, uh, we, we push through, we get it done, no matter what it is. Whether it's a career, it's something we enjoy doing, we push through. And so... There's some things that we compiled a list of that we kind of want to hit on a little bit uh, moving into next week that tends to hold us back. And so here's what I want to do, because I want to hear from you. Like, me and him answered it, and I'm like, I really don't care about his answer. But, so here's what I want to do. Jace, if you will, put this QR code up top for me. If you go into the message app, or in the, the church's app under messages. If you hadn't downloaded it, it's the Agape app. It's got the two little lines on either side of Agape Laurel. You need to download that anyway so you can keep up with what's going on. But you go into that, and I want everybody to participate now. Don't, don't sit back and say, uh, you know, that's not for me because your name's not tied to it. It's totally anonymous. So I won't know who you are. Might be a good thing, but I won't know who you are. Now, for you that know how to use your smartphones and doesn't talk from that white paper stuff, you can scan this code and it'll take you to it. And so it's one question. I'm asking one question. Y'all give me one question. I'm asking one question. And it is, there's four answers. It's multiple choice. So everybody gets to pass this morning, okay? Everybody gets to pass. But there are four reasons that we put on there that, that most every time... It will fall, the reason we don't share our faith, it will fall into. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to answer that question honestly because your name's not tied to it. Because here's what I do know. If I do not address the problem, I can't fix it. And that goes for you too. And so whatever it is that is holding us back, for us that call ourselves believers, not when it's just convenient, but when we call ourselves believers, Christians, uh, whatever other name there is out there for it, we call ourselves that. What is it that holds us back from sharing our faith? From sharing our faith. So, are you able to pull that question up? All right, it's saying that we might have reached our limit Everybody participating. All right, I'm getting that's why. That's why we stay with the paper and pencil. <laughs> Technology, paper, pencil. You guys see that, right? I'm still getting votes in. What it is, all y'all hitting it all at the same time is what it is. All right, so I'm just curious. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to steal this. For just a second. And so if you look on the screen, these are, and there's some more that are trickling in. These are the votes of where our biggest struggles are. And so there's the fear of rejection, right? Nobody likes to be told no. I hate asking a question that I don't know the answer to. So the fear of rejection, we're getting several votes in on that. The fear of knowledge or the fear of, of the lack of knowledge, which is a big one, right? I, I'm seeing some heads nod. That's, that's a tough one. The fear of consequences. Let me explain this. And if you don't get to answer on the app, if it won't let you in because of it's, cr it's trying to crash so many people answering, that's fine. The fear of consequence, let me, let me answer that. The fear of consequences, you live in the same town as the people that you're sharing your faith with. You might see this person next week at Piggly Wiggly or at Walmart or at Popeye's getting some chicken. 
You never know. You might see, and here's the, here's the deal. There's a consequence that could come with that. Say, say this conversation doesn't go well. There's some rejection. Then we have this consequence of they don't like me now or, or they don't care anything about me. Or, or maybe, maybe it's somebody that you know and you decide to share your faith with and you think about the consequence. They may not want to hang out anymore. They may not want to be around me anymore because I shared my faith with them. And so you have the fear of consequences. What are the consequences of sharing my faith? Which is a big one, a big one. And then the last one, and I appreciate the honesty. If I'm honest, I'm just too busy. If I'm honest, I'm just too busy. And so I'm going to flip this back. And so when we look at these areas, they tend to be the biggest things that hold us back. Now, for you that did not get a chance to actually enter into the poll, you've got your answer in mind of what it is, the struggle that, that you face when it comes to sharing your faith. Because here's what I do want to do. I want us this morning to move past that fear or that distraction that keeps us from ever being effective in the kingdom. And when we say effective, here's what I want you to know. When, when you accept Jesus into your life, yes, it is free. It is absolutely free. And Jesus wants to come into your life. He wants to change and he wants to do some amazing things. And, and us uh, confessing our sins and, and asking him to come in our life, that is a big, huge part of it. But here's what we need to understand is that that's not what salvation is. It's not a one-time event. It's not a one-time event. Salvation, because uh, here's the deal. We love that whole sales pitch of eternal life in heaven. That's good stuff, right? Like, I want some confidence in the fact when I take my last breath, and newsflash, everybody in here will, when you take your last breath, then you will spend eternity in heaven, and that is a great sales pitch, but here's what we need to understand. There is a life to be lived after that. And so for the ones that says, hey, I want that salvation, he says, okay, it's free, but... but I need you to tell other people about it. Now, you don't lose your salvation for not telling someone, but he says, if you love me enough and this gift is that important to you, then why don't we share it with someone else? And so we have to move past these four different items, three of them being fear, three of them being fear, and one being misplaced priorities. Misplaced priorities, because that's what it is. Because you make time for what you want to do. Believe me, we're all busy. We understand that. We understand that. But in preparing for this and, and reading through these, and, and actually, if you go into the message app, and I don't normally uh, recommend books other than the Bible, because uh, I don't read a lot of books, but I did read this book yesterday. And if you go into your message uh, heading in the church app, if you scroll down, there's a link to an article. And in that article at the bottom, there's a link to a free digital book. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And I read this book about sharing your faith and, and about, about living on mission and a lot of the stuff in there was, was revolutionary for someone that grew up in church. Because let me tell y'all something. There's probably not anybody here that's been to church more than I have. Probably not. I grew up in church. When I was knee high to a grasshopper, I was in church. And this book was revolutionary to my approach to sharing my faith. 
And so one of the big things in there was there is power in the preparation. There is power in the preparation. See, sharing your faith starts long before you ever open your mouth. Let me say that again. Sharing your faith starts long before you ever open your mouth to anyone. And I was like, wow. You know, I thought we just rolled up and talked to people. No, it's, it's a little bit more than that. And so when we look at the fear of rejection and we look at the fear of knowledge and the fear of consequences, so you, you picked that one off of the list for yourself. And so in that message heading inside that app, there's a spot in there to put what's your next step. We've identified what the problem is. You have identified the problem that you have. And so the question is, what is your next steps? Because James, James loves to make fun of me because I'm all about the next steps. Like, all right, we're at point A. What's point B look like? Let's, let's, get, let's move to that. So what is your next step? Not mine. I know what mine is. I took the quiz. So I know what my next step is. If, it, if it's fear of rejection, here's what we need to understand. First of all, Jesus was rejected. His disciples were rejected. The people that were close to him rejected. So what makes us think that we will not be rejected? Some, at least some. The, the good thing about in, in our country now, at least we won't get stoned for it. People will just tell you no. So if Jesus could be rejected, I promise you will be too. It's just part of the game. That's part, that's part of what this life is about. That's the unnecessary uh, evil that comes with this. There is rejection. The lack of knowledge. It's hard to share about someone if you haven't spent time getting to know them yourself. So, lack of knowledge. And that one was mine for a long time. What do we do about that? What do we do that? Now, let's, let's throw the churchy answer out there. We always talk about reading your Bible and praying. Well, here's a news flash. It really works. It, it really works. So if, if getting out there and sharing your faith, you, you don't know, you, you, just, you don't have the knowledge to do that, there's a Jesus that he was God, Come on, y'all, can I get a nod from somebody? He's, okay. You got Jesus, he died on a cross and he was rose again. And all you have to do to accept him is to confess that he's Lord and Savior and confess your sins and repent. And he comes into your heart. That's the short version. Now you can go as in depth as you want to. You could break open the book of Romans in the New Testament, and you could get serious with it if you want to, and that's great. Knowledge is power. You've heard it, heard, you've heard it spoke from the stage from Pastor James, and all you do get understanding. This is part of getting understanding. Now, if we could force you to do that, we would, but we can't do that. It don't work that way. So, if lack of knowledge is what holds you back, then it's time to start breaking up the word. Let me ask you this, litmus test, what's your quiet times look like? How much on a daily basis are you spending with God? How much time? Now, we always talk about 10% in tithing. And we talk about 10%, we talk about giving and tithing. What about... Don't you think God is incorporating time into this too? God just doesn't want your money. He wants you. He wants you. He doesn't care how much money you've got to give. But something more valuable than money is your time. And so how much are we giving to him? Lack of knowledge. It, again, we're real Sunday. Real Sunday. Fear of consequences. The consequence, somebody may not want to be my friend anymore. If they don't want to be your friend because you believe in Jesus, they weren't a friend to start with. And we've all heard that before. 
but it's time to let it sink into the soul a little bit. We can't be worried about the consequences. Again, we don't, we don't have to worry about being stoned in this country. And that's a positive right there. Because if we did, there'd probably be a lot of us that for sure wouldn't do it. But the fear of consequences, and there's one key theme. One key theme when I was reading uh, through scripture and, and what this particular, and then also this book this author brought out is the fact that it's a love problem. It is a love problem. Uh, Tim Keller said this. He said, if I love someone enough, I will overcome my fear and share Christ with them. But if I don't, I won't. If I love someone, notice that he did not say that the fear would dissolve or it would dissipate or it would go away. If I love someone enough, I will overcome my fear. Jesus says that love conquers everything. And, and last time I looked, fear falls under everything. Am I right, Jeff? Is that right? Does that make sense? So fear falls under that. Let me tell you something in the scripture. Fear not is the Bible's most repeated command. Fear not. The Bible's most repeated command is to fear not. So God understood that there would be fear involved. And that's the reason why four, three out of the four on that list involves fear. Is because it's that big of a deal. We tend to fear anything. And he says, we cannot allow fear to control what we do. 1 John 4, 18 says, whoever fears not, or whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We could end right there. Whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Because love drives out fear. Love drives out darkness and anything that it associates with it. That's how powerful love is. We tend, to, we tend to throw the flowers and the pretty artwork around love, and it's just, we got the beautiful hearts and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. There's some power behind that word love. It's not soft. It can be, and it needs to have that aspect, but love has a power aspect to it that a lot of us never tap into. And so I encourage you to do that, to tap into that. But when we boil it down, it is a love problem. It is a love problem. And then the last, that covers fear. Loving people will overcome fear. So love overcomes fear. You want to learn how to love? Write this down, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Use that as your litmus test to life. You put that up against your life. If you are doing what 1 Corinthians 13 says, you're loving. There's going to be some hurt feelings because mine gets hurt all the time reading 1 Corinthians 13. And I think about customer service like you was talking about a while ago. I'm like, I need to work on that. So 1 Corinthians 13. That's how we do that. And then the last one, life is just too busy, the misplaced priorities. Chew on this right here. And this, this, this hit me pretty hard yesterday, but, but chew on this. Your busy priorities and everything going on, and then we have a lost and dying world that needs Jesus. Jesus understood that every, let me say that again, every human life, even the person you tried to swerve off the side of the road, the customer per service person that, or maybe it was the person that talked bad to you or talked about you, every, he understood that every human life is a miracle. When we start believing that, you will be able to start loving these people. Every human life is a miracle. Every human life is fascinating. And every human life bears the imprint of God. That includes every human life in here. 
Every one of you has the imprint of God on your life. You were created in his image. You were created in his likeness. And when we start seeing other people that way, we will start, we will put ourselves in a position to start loving them the way God's called us to love them. Again, it's still a love problem. So ultimately, learning how to love the people around us is going to empower us to share our faith. It's going to empower us to love the community, to serve the community. You know, next week, um, next week when we head out to Triangle Field, I shared this with our serve team this morning, but, but it excites me. And it should excite you to a point that we are willing to, as a church, sacrifice a Sunday morning in the building. Our conference of Sunday morning in the building just so that we can go somewhere and we can serve our community. Just so that we can go somewhere and we have an opportunity to build relationships, to share our faith with people. Now... Forgive me if any's watching online, but we're not taking the Jehovah's Witness approach. We're not going to body slam people with the Bible. We're not going to do that. We're going to go up with love, and we're going to hopefully open the door to share Jesus with somebody. And that's what next week's about. And today, up here from the stage, this is us preparing you for next week. Because... And, and for the ones online that are watching, that we'll go back and watch, and everyone in here, understand that next Sunday morning... Those doors will be locked to this building. So no matter how bad you want to come in here and sit, you won't. I know y'all love Gabe singing up here. Sorry, Gabe, I didn't mean to out you. But those doors will be locked. And it's because we believe that's more important than this right here for at least one Sunday a year for at least one Sunday a year. And so here's the thing, and we're, I'm closing this thing down. First of all, don't overthink this, please. It is easy to do. Like, there's a million books wrote out there about evangelizing, about sharing your faith, about, about what to do and what not to do and how to do it. You remember Evangelism Explosion? Do you remember that? That was a huge thing back in the 90s. Uh, you may not knew Jesus then. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But evangelism explosion was a big thing. And it's just they, they, you role played and you walked through and that's all important and that's, that's good. But we tend to overthink this. We tend to overthink just having a conversation I've seen some of y'all on Sunday morning. Some of y'all know how to talk. Kelly Pugh's the best talker in the world back there. I love him. Like he can talk. So why can't we channel that energy to talking about something eternal? Let's channel that energy. So don't overthink this. First of all, this week. So here's your next steps. So if you didn't have your own, I'm going to give you some. Here's your next test. First of all, there's power in your preparation. This week, I want to challenge you every day this week, whether you can make it next week or not, just shy of the emergency room, you should be there. But if next week, I want you, I challenge you every day this week to pray for the people that you're going to come in contact with. Every day, don't miss a day, set an alarm, write it on your mirror. Put a post-it note on your dash or your car. Whatever it takes, write it down. Pray. Pray for the people we're going to come in contact. Come into this with the idea that we're going to open some doors. We're going to open some doors. No matter what happens, I need you to understand this. And you're going to hear this said again. Remember that you don't save anybody Jesus does. All we're called to do is plant the seed. We're called to open the door. 
We're called to give someone an opportunity to get to know the one that can change their lives and eternity for them forever. Remember that Jesus saves that you don't. The other thing, this is easy to do because we're we're taking a Sunday and we're dedicating time. We tend to call those projects. And this is a project to us here as, as logistically it's a project. It's, it's getting the food there and that kind of thing. But let me tell you something. The people you'll come in contact are not. These are people. They're not projects. These are people. They're not projects. You know how we're going to say that is because the plan, the plan is to be back. This is not a one-off thing. We believe this is where God has called us to love people and to share our faith. So we're not just going to show up next Sunday and walk away from it. We're planning to go back. This ain't the last time you're going to hear about this. Now, that doesn't mean you can miss this time. But this isn't going to be the last time you hear about this because we believe that they're that important. Luke 7, 34 says that Jesus was a friend of tax collectors and sinners. The scum of the earth in that time. Jesus was a friend. Should there be a difference between us and him? I know it's a challenging morning. It absolutely is challenging for me. It had me broke down yesterday just thinking about it. But it is challenging. But then on the other side, I look, is the risk worth the reward? Is the risk worth the reward? That person that you have a chance to share Jesus with, you may be the only chance How awesome would it be to walk the streets of gold one day and see them beside you? Tell me what else in this life can have a higher purpose, a higher calling than that. Tell me what else in this life. I promise it's not your career. It's not your hobbies. It's not your sports. It's not your fun. It's not all the things that you find yourself doing can never amount up to the purpose and the calling of seeing someone get to know Jesus for the first time and then one day seeing them again. And then the last thing, and Jeff said it, this Jeff said it, and the other Jeff said it, be ready to talk. Be ready to talk. Open our mouths. That's how the the gospel is communicated. You can show Jesus through the way you live, but at at some point we have to tell them about Jesus. At some point we have to tell them about Jesus for them to experience it, to to hear it, and for it to sink in and the door be open so that they can experience Jesus too. And so this morning, I hope that you'll take it serious to prepare for next week. My prayer, as I joke around a lot, but my prayer is that you don't look at next week as a time off, a day off. That there are lives at stake. I hope that you never turn around and look at this as not your responsibility. I hope that you never look at this as just busy work or just something else to do. We passed out flyers yesterday. And I'm going to tell you, I, I hold my Saturdays very dear. I work 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day during the week. But my Saturdays is to get my stuff done. And, and we showed up, and I was like, this is Saturday. There was that mind. The thought that went through my mind, I'm like, crap. I'm sorry if that offended anybody. I was like, no. My first thought was, I'm wasting my Saturday. And God said, you ain't wasting nothing. Wasted nothing. You know what? 
I handed people flyers and I got to invite them. And, and here's what the beautiful thing. I never mentioned Agape Church. I got to invite them to the I For y'all that's watching online, that's going to be doing the cooking. Some of y'all here, some of you not. It's got to be big because I promise these people will be barbecue. So we're going to have some some good food and so it's just and, and to see it light up on their face man that sounds great we'll be there it brought me it humbled me a little bit it humbled me a little bit so you can look at this two different ways the church is just trying to find me something else to do or maybe the church is putting you in a position to live out your call overseas and sometimes we if we not all of us are able to do that but here's what you can do for the ones that are still here we can make a difference right here too this is this is a mission field too and so Jeff you got any more thoughts on that I just want to I just want to do one little thing on with a three out of four be in fear. One thing that changed me on the fear part was when you realize there, there's two meanings of fear, right? The, the respect and the, for the power and the power of God. We fear God that way, right? But the other one, the other meaning of fear, like it, it's sinful. Like, and if, if, if we realize and we if we if we see it as being scared, being fearful as a sin, it can make us think different, right? It can make us think different. And I want to challenge, just real quick, I want to challenge, maybe just read, um, and it, it can help out on a lot of the answers, but just read, let's just say 2 Timothy. It's four chapters. You can have it done before the game tonight, or you can have it done at halftime, right? Just read 2 Timothy. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave with one thing. It says, and we all know this scripture, um, for, or 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. But it, it keeps on going. It says, So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. Don't be ashamed of me. This is Paul saying. Don't be ashamed of me either. Even though I'm in prison for him with the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it. We didn't deserve it. But because that was his plan from before the beginning of time. Look at fear, that kind of fear, we'll call it the second kind of fear, Look at it as a sin. And I think, I mean, it, it really opened my eyes when you started thinking, well, I fear rejection. That's sinful. I fear not no knowledge. Hey Amen. Jesus loves you. It's the knowledge that you can start with. Jesus loves you. You don't have to spit, throw scripture off every instant every comment you don't argue with you we don't get into arguments we don't try to persuade we just say Jesus loves you so I just want to challenge you the next time that we do something and we're scared about it if we're spreading the good news if we're spreading the gospel just think that it's, it's a sin to fear that part so but God has not given you God has not given me the spirit of fear. Have y'all gotten anything out of this this morning? I hope, I hope you have. I hope you have. Guys, we want to be a church that loves this community. And we believe this is our first step to doing it. So we, we encourage you now. I'm going to jump straight into the announcements before the worship team closes us out. Because it's, it's very important. Uh, first of all, next 
Saturday, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road. We're landing the plane. Next Saturday, 10 a.m., and you can remember this, June the 10th at 10 a.m., we will be passing out flyers again. We're passing out flyers again. It took us 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So we'll be passing out flyers, letting people know. Uh, I know the other team had an opportunity to pray with someone uh, yesterday, and so we're we're not getting terribly deep in it next Saturday. And then next Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, is Street Fest, Triangle Street Fest. Now, a couple things. No church here. No church here. We will be starting over there at a at 11 a.m. because this is lunch. This is what we're doing. Uh, we ask you to be there as early as you can. Now, we probably need you there by 10 for sure. Like, I know that's early for some people. But if, I'll be there at 7. Put it that way. So you come whenever you can because there's there's a place for every person sitting in a chair in here, which I think is everybody. So every person sitting in a chair, there's something for you to do. sure next Sunday. Now, a couple of things. First of all, Street Fest is not about you. So when you show up, it's not about me feeding you. It's about us feeding the community. It's about loving the people around us. So, don't walk up to Street Fest with the mentality that I'm here to eat lunch. No. You're going to get to eat lunch. We'll let you eat. But this is about the community. This is about the community. Bring a lawn chair. You're going to need it. Bring a lawn chair. Unless you want to stand up all all the time. That's up to you. We'll have some chairs and stuff there. But bring a lawn chair so you can't sit down and and open conversations up with people. And then the last thing... um, this week for this event. I've already been praying for the people that that we'll come in contact with, and I encourage you to do that too, to pray for the people that that you'll come in contact with. Now, if you want to get one of these nice, pretty shirts that me and Jeff are sporting around with on stage this morning, these things are free. Yeah, I said it. It's free. Now, how you get one of those? You need to go online. You need to register to be here next week. We have a table set up in the lobby that's got the shirts on it. And if you go online, it takes, I think I said six seconds this morning. It might take some of y'all seven seconds. But go online, and all you do is you go on our events page, you register, you put your name in, you put the size shirt you want. Because I don't want to overpromise shirts. And so you go on, and when you register now, if you register, we're fully expecting you to show up next Sunday morning. Don't register just to get the shirt. Register with the intent of being there. The shirt's just a bonus. A bonus. This is how we spend a lot of money on these shirts. So, we have those shirts out in the lobby. You must register. I've instructed the ones that's at the table that if you don't register, you don't get one. We would love to give all the shirts away. So, please, go online, get registered. We'll have them uh, next Sunday at the Triangle Street Fest, so if you want to change into one there, you can, but if not, if you want to go and register, we'll have that out there for you to do. Is that clear as mud? Clear as mud. We get that? Uh, Also, we have Downtown Movie Night, which is an extension of what we're doing at Street Fest. Y'all just thought we were just playing a movie. We ain't playing no movie. Well, we we are playing a movie. But it's we are planning to communicate that with people next week so with an opportunity to reconnect with them at Downtown Movie Night. We're going to share Jesus at Movie Night. But here's the thing. Movie Night, let's just be honest, it is a beast to get going, and we need your help. So here's what I'm asking is everyone to go on there and pick one Thursday night out of the four and register. 
register to be a part of it, to help with vendors and help setting up and cleaning up and that kind of thing. So go online, same place you'd register for Street Fest, you register for Downtown Movie Night. Uh, you'll see the four different dates there, the four different dates to do that. Uh, tonight, and it's a great kickoff tonight, we have First Sunday Prayer. Great way to prepare for next week. Great way to prepare for next week. So first Sunday prayer tonight at 6 o'clock. So come out and be a part of that. Summers are busy around here, aren't they? Man, it's good stuff, though. It's good stuff. And then last but not least, uh, if this morning you need to give your tithes and offerings, then we ask you to do that in four different ways. Four different ways. You can do that on the app. You can do that on the website. Uh, you can text to give. Or you can drop it, use the envelopes in the back of the chairs. You can drop it in the back of the auditorium. If this is your first time with us, there are connection cards there also you can fill out. And, and we would love to give you a gift if this is your first time with us. Uh, if not, if you have a prayer request, fill that out and drop those in that box in the back also. I will tell you this, you tithe and offering is what makes stuff like Street Fest happen. Something like Street Fest is going to cost thousands of dollars to do. So understand this. When you give your tithes and offerings, you just sowed into the lives of the people that we get to serve. There's so much going on this summer, I just said. But I want to emphasize tonight, we got a team overseas that's walking streets they've never walked into. We got people that's been there for the first time they've never been before. Like they've given up a lot to go and preach the gospel. As a church tonight, we'll lift them up in corporate prayer. If you can't make it, it's okay. But I encourage tonight, we're talking about lives at Triangle Community. We're talking about salvations. We're talking about people changing. This isn't just a gimmick just to kind of do something because we just didn't want to sit inside here. Like, this is the real stuff that we're going to the streets. We're go, they're in Budapest. They're, or, or try, it doesn't matter. Like, we're talking about lives. So I encourage tonight at 6 o'clock. It's an hour. You'll be gone before the game even starts tonight if you guys are watching the game. That, but I, I encourage tonight. Super important. Absolutely. All right. So everyone, let's stand. I'm going to dismiss us. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Make sure you go online and get registered. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, to, to break open your word, Father, to hear how much that you love us. And, and Father, uh, Father, I pray that, Father, that you teach us to love that way. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to come into our lives and flip it upside down so that we can see people that are far from you come close to you. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son that went to the cross. We thank you for your spirit that walks with us every day. Father, I pray for the people that we're going to come in contact this week and next weekend, Father, that, that lives are changed. Father, we still believe there is power in the blood that was spilled for us. And so, Father, you go with us, you walk with us, you disciple us, you grow us, you mold us, you make us, Father, into the people you've called us to be. And we're going to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise forever for in his name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. You guys are dismissed. We'll see you next week.